I mean, when I get an interview with Donald Trump in the White House, are you going to be like, well, I mean, anyone who interviews Donald Trump, are you going to do that? If you Google my name, you'll find lots of news articles about me. Farage knows who I am. I'm going to debate on MythCon next week. This isn't about my ego. This is about your ego. I've been on Joe Rogan. So much better than all the other internet players. What do you think I'm doing the BBC interview tomorrow? I have no idea who you've met. No idea what you do. I don't know where you go and who you meet. Like you're insecure and a little bitch. But yes, I'm the most important person in the world. Pretty in regular contact with the leader of UKIP. UKIP is like going to your auntie's barbecue. On the degree of separation to Donald Trump, you get to meet Nigel Farage and have Nigel Farage know who they are before they even say hello. I speak to them quite regularly. I don't know what any of you do. Why don't you join UKIP? I think Jim's being ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, that's a redundant one there. Farage knows who I am. Give me one separate, one degree of separation to Donald Trump. The smug, it's getting bigger and gaining strength. Meeting Farage, I actually sat in a meeting with results. I met him twice. Pretty in regular contact with the leader of UKIP. What the hell is that? This is actually the second position where I've been one degree of separation from Trump. It's getting closer, and closer, and closer. But other things I will do will make the news. And you know they'll make the news, and if you Google my name, you'll find lots of news articles about me. The perfect storm of self-satisfaction. Argon, listen to me. In your madness, you've taken individualism to such an extreme that you're destroying the world around you. Who cares? All that matters is the individual. Well, happy Sunday, fun day to you, Chad. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. We have so much to go over. I had plans for what this weekend was going to be. I had clips lined up and forum posts, and it was going to be just glorious. But I've had to adjust a little bit. I had to adjust a tiny bit what I'd be presenting today. Originally, it was going to be some Monday Matt, a little bit of Bunty King, a little bit of David Shitrat. Uh, we're going to change that up, though. There's still going to be some Bunty in there because it's funny stuff. David Shitrat, Monday Matt, and a few of the other things are going to be moved to next week. Today, we're going to be talking about... I don't even know what to call this era. How would you define it? I guess PS? But instead of, like, post-scriptum, it's post-suitum? We're in the post-suit era of Sargon, where the dumpster fire just continues onward and onward. Now, if you were here last week, you uh, you are familiar with the story, the build-up. To where we are today. Let me, um, <laughs> let me, well, let me, there we go. So I made fun of the Don suit and he didn't take it too well. It led to a little bit of a back and forth between us. He did a stream. I did a stream. And one of the interesting things that he had said, uh, well, one of the many interesting things he had said during his stream and the follow up, uh, the 24 hours after it, uh, was that he was most assured that he had nothing to worry about when it came to his political future and uh, that he was out there activizing and that I'm just being jaded and bitter and just poor Jim suitless artless Jim not accomplishing anything but laughing at retards on the internet but Sargon's out there saving the West so uh, where does <laughs> where does that leave us well uh, some interesting things have happened I, I thought we could go over them before we get into the the bunty goodness uh, now <laughs> Where do I want to start this? I've got, I've got a lot of stuff lined up. So let's let us see where we can start. How about with this? I'm going to pull this up on screen. I might have to grab the originals too to read along. I just want a visual representation. So you can see and read along with me. This was a message that was left for uh, our friend Carl on his Facebook uh, account from Jamie. Hi, Carl. We're going to run a story about you in this weekend's paper. In it, we will state the following. In a podcast recorded in February, you accused members of the alt-right of acting like a bunch of niggers and called them white niggers and faggots. 
You also said white people are meant to be polite and respectful to one another, and you guys can't even act like white people. Screenshots circulating online and comments made by Paul Joseph Watson suggest that UKIP was aware you had made these comments before admitting you into the party. You tweeted, I wouldn't even rape you, to MP Jess Phillips in 2016, sparking a trolling campaign that she claims resulted in her receiving 600 abusive tweets from your followers. You spoke at the UKIP conference on Friday through a pre-recorded video message that was shown to the main stage, appeared with Gerard Batten at the European Parliament earlier this month, and are scheduled to speak at UKIP's youth event on November 10th. Sky News has reported that you helped craft the new UKIP manifesto and communication strategy. If you would like to comment on any of these points, I would be grateful for your response by 6 p.m. today. Please call me on and then you put a number up there. It's been redacted as a matter of urgency. Thank you. Well, Sargon, of course, being the busy politician he is at MythCon, uh, did give a response. So let's take a look at his well-thought-out response to this journalist's inquiry about past comments that he that he may have made on the internet. From Sargon of Akkad, this is in response to, obviously, Jamie. I'm afraid I'm in the U.S. at the moment, so I can't call, but I can give you my comment here, which I expect to see reproduced in full. Always good to have the expectation that the mainstream media is going to oblige you, because we all know that the news is trustworthy, huh, Sargon? I expect to see it reproduced in full. Oof. Okay, well, that's a good strategy. The fact we're talking about me and not the issues reflects the broader cultural malaise that affects modern Western democracies. The above mentioned are not crime. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> wow. The above mentioned are not crimes. They are offenses against political correctness that may have been taken out of context in which they were used as an attempt at smearing my character. No focus is given to the number of people who thank me for helping them feel that they are not alone in their, res uh, in their resistance to political correctness with charity I have done in my online community or the arguments I have made for a more close focus on the principle of British liberalism. Tried by public opinion was certainly one of the main factors that caused Brexit and Donald Trump and it is as if political establishment has learned nothing. The media's lack of attention paid to arguments is why the alternative <laughs> is why the alternative influencer network on YouTube and every other social media platform is growing every day. We talk about issues and not three-year-old tweets. Where the mainstream has avoided long-form conversations in favor of short sound bites and gotcha reporting, such as this very article. The alternative media is growing because of the useful content they produce. And this trend will continue. So Sargon put his foot down. He told that evil reporter, you'd better re- Who does- <laughs> God, he's so delusional. It, it's like he's comparing himself to, to Farage and Trump and then demanding to be given, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, five paragraph response in an article that- isn't probably going to be five paragraphs long. And don't you know that he believes in charity? I mean, Carl is a, he's a big charity guy. Now, I know this is a bit of an aside, and we're going to be going through some funny shit here in a minute. Uh, but, you know, it's so much charity on his part. You know who else likes charity? Uh, uh, Sargon? Let me see if I can find this. Oh, there we go. This is a tweet from the Ralph retort from Ethan Ralph. Since the people want Jim versus Sargon, Sargon wants a 1v1 with me on his own channel, and I wanted to raise money for kids with cancer. My offer is this. If Mr. Antibully, a good friend of mine, by the way, is willing, me and Jim, Sargon and V, super chat for good turned on, money goes to St. Jude. Now, I know a lot of people would look at that tweet and they'd say, oh my, that's terrible. That's terrible. Look at Ethan Ralph trying to use charity to drag Sargon into something that he just doesn't want to do. What an what a what a terrible person. What kind of asshole would use charity as a carrot to attack the character of another man and make him do something he doesn't want to do? I can tell you for certain, Sargon would never do such a thing. 
because Sargon is a smart intellectual thinker. He has moral standards us plebs don't have? Okay, we need to get on his fucking level. Disgusting, Ralph, that you would do something like that. Sargon would never ever do that. I know you think you could do that, but hang on, I'm not asking for your time for free. I'll pay you a thousand pounds, that's a thousand four hundred dollars, for one hour of your time to come on a live stream and talk to me about feminism. And if that's not enough, I'll set up a GoFundMe, which will be linked in the description of this video, so anyone who wants to donate to you can do that. You know, what am I thinking? I don't, I, <laughs> a man of your stature does not need my money, so, I mean, I, in fact, that's probably an insult to offer you money for your time, isn't it? You don't need that. So what I'll do, I know, I know what kind of good Samaritan you are, so what I'll do is I'll find the charity of your choice, a feminist charity of your choice, um, I don't know, something like Refuge, or the Fawcett Society, or Women's Aid, something like that. Any any charity that helps women and girls. I mean, I, d I can't name one, because I'm a grizzled old misogynist, but you can name the charity. And then we will donate all of that money to the charity. I'll, um, I'll make sure they receive it personally. And then, then all you have to do is give me one hour of your time to educate me on feminism. All I'll do is I'll ask questions, and you can tell me the answers. I won't say anything mean or anything like that. And then you'll have proven your point when you see Instead of, you know, blowing some hot air. You can contact me on Twitter. All you need to do is unblock me. And uh, we can do this anytime you want. I'll arrange around your schedule. But uh, anyway, I've got to get back to my reading. <laughs> You're a garbage human, Ralph. What are you doing? Trying to use charity like that. Our good friend Carl would never sink so low. Be sure to tweet Ralph and tell him, tell him what a bad guy he is for raising money for kids with cancer. He needs to get, he needs to get on the level of a professional politician, like our big boy in his fancy suit. Okay, so back to the main story, where we are right now. This journalist contacted Sargon, and um, oh, Jesus, uh, Sargon gave his response. So, how do you think that turned out, Chad? If you were to wager, to take a guess. What do, you, what do you think? Do you think that journalist was telling the truth? Do you think he wrote an article? And if you think he wrote the article, do you think he gave five fucking paragraphs to Sargon's response? I'll give you a second to catch up with me. Let's, uh, let's see what your thoughts are. If you're big-brained, like our liberalistism's uh, friend here. Oh, and I forgot. There's a delay. How terrible of me. I'll wait for you to catch up so you can tell me tell me your deep, deep uh, insight on that. Well, I'm going to ruin it for you. I'm going to ruin it for you. Because today, things started popping up. Racist troll who sent rape tweet addresses UKIP members. Uh-oh. Oof. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. I'm pretty sure didn't, didn't Sargon smugly chuckle during his last live stream and say, Oh, Jim. They'll never, they'll never write an article about me like that. Oh, you're being silly. And literally a week later, here we are. Okay, let's take a look at the article itself. Now, give me one moment. I'm going to pull up the uh, cap so I can read it to everybody. It's a bit of a big one. It was behind a bit of a paywall, but somebody graciously took the hit and then reposted it. Uh, this article is from the Times, reproduced in full with no annotation. Full credit to the author, Jamie. That was the same person we saw on his... Uh, Facebook account. Make sure everything is set and ready to go. So let's let's read the article. Let's see if uh, let's see if uh, <laughs> they gave him his response. An internet troll who was accused opponents of acting like a bunch of niggers and sent rape tweets to the Labor MP Jess Phillips has addressed activists at the UKIP party conference. Carl Benjamin 39 who uses the alias Sargon of Akkad is a political commentator who has gained nearly uh, 850,000 subscribers on YouTube by making videos critical of feminism, Islam, and political correctness. He joined UKIP in June as part of the party's attempt at part of the party's attempt to attract younger internet savvy supporters. I, I don't know. Is this article saying that Carl is grooming? grooming younger people to come to the party? I don't know. Let's read on. Benjamin addressed the UKIP conference in the Bring, or Birmingham on Friday via a video message shown on the main stage in which he said he had joined the party to defend British liberal, or liberty 
against communists in our universities, Islamists in our northern towns, and censorous MPs. He is also due to appear in person at the Party Youth Conference on November 10th. Benjamin's role raises new questions about the direction UKIP is taking under leader Jared Batten, who came under fire from Nigel Farage last week for his support of the English Defense League founder, convicted fraudster. Stephen, is that Yaxley Lennon? I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that person. Benjamin gained notoriety in 2016 when he was accused of instigating a misogynistic trolling campaign against the Labour MP for Birmingham, Yardley. I wouldn't even rape you, he tweeted at Phillips, promoting a deluge of threatening tweets against her, including rape and death threats from his followers. He has since been banned from Twitter. In a live stream recorded in February, Benjamin appeared to lose his temper at one viewer's comment. You are acting like a bunch of niggers? Just so you know, you act like white niggers, he said. Benjamin insisted his comments had been taken out of context. You know, context is important. And I do think I have that clip somewhere. Let me see if I can find that. Has he been taken out of context? Let's let's just play it. I don't have it lined up, but I do have the audio somewhere, somewhere buried around here. So let's play it and listen and see if it was taken out of context. See, look, look this is what I mean about the chat. I just can't be bothered to deal with people who treat me like this. It's, it's really annoying. Like, I... You are acting like a bunch of niggers, just so you know. You you act like white niggers. Exactly how you describe black people acting is the impression I get dealing with the alt-right. I'm really, I'm just not in the mood to deal with this kind of disrespect. And I know it sounds like, oh my God, he's demanding respect. But yeah, to be honest with you, do you not think that like we should have a level of decorum in interpersonal interactions? And it's like, look, look, the internet is bullying me. I'm not saying you're bullying me. I'm saying there's just no point dealing with this kind of attitude. Is it? I know it's called trolling, but it's not like something I need to deal with if I don't want to have to deal with it. Upper class twat, dude. I'm not an upper class twat. I come from fucking the most working class roots. At least my parents do. It, it, Jesus Christ! It's just like you understand that I'm a person, don't you? You know, you, you guys understand. Then why would I bother? <laughs> like, why would I bother? You act like enough class title now. Maybe you're just acting like a nigger, mate. Have you considered that? Do you think white people act like this? White people are meant to be polite and respectful to one another, and you guys can't even act like white people? It's really, like, amazing to me. Clearly, completely taken out of context. This poor man, <laughs> this poor man is being smeared. Okay, where, where did we leave off? He has enjoyed a good relationship with Batten, appearing alongside him at uh, or appearing alongside the UKIP leadership at the European Parliament this month and interviewing him on the his YouTube channel. This is uh, particularly funny to me. Carolyn Jones, the Welsh Assembly member who quit the party on Wednesday over her uh, opposition to the party's lurch to the far right under uh, Batten, said Farage would never have allowed Benjamin to join the party. There were standards then, she said. Can we... I just... I want to read that one again. Former UKIP member left the party in protest, had the following to say about uh, Sargon of Akkad. Farage would never have allowed Benjamin to join the party. There were standards then. Oh, that is harsh. UKIP said Batten had invited Benjamin to speak at a panel on the EU as a subject matter expert. And that was not an official party representative. He said some distasteful things in the past, but that won't. Uh, but that. Uh, but the vast bulk of what he says is very sensible. A party spokesman said. So, we've already got somebody in party leadership basically saying, "Oh no, he's not with us." And we we have a former member, a former member saying Farage wouldn't let somebody of his type into the party, which seems to contradict a lot of what. Sargon said last week where he was like they know me on a first name basis um, it, what is it UKIP's like a family barbecue was that another one uh, I talk to these people all the time well somebody's lying either UKIP is completely lying or or Sargon is but uh, that was not the only article there there were more uh, this one appeared in the times the second article was a little more spicy revealed Bizarre views of UKIP's sinister rising stars. 
Now, let me um, pull this one up too, and I'll read it to you. We won't go into the full the full article. You'll see why in a second. It's really the second paragraph that's got a bit of a it's got a bit of an oof to it. So let me see if I can. Oh, where did I put this? Oh, there goes Boomer Jim fucking things up again. There's so much shit in this folder. There's so much Bunty related shit in this folder that I'm using to show on screen that it's impossible to track down shit now. There we go. Oh, let me just double check that. Okay, that's good. All right. Revealed bizarre views of UKIP sinister rising stars. A UKIP conference overshadowed by warnings that the party's new leader, Jared Batten, is dragging the party to marginalization at the extremes of politics has been addressed by controversial figures, including a YouTuber who has even outraged alt-right listeners, asking them to act white and using the N-word. The newly joined UKIPper is notorious for publicly threatening a female MP with rape, bizarre opinions on women's rights, and the age of <laughs> okay, and the age of sexual consent. And this is in quotes, depending on the child. Let's read that again just to really absorb it. The newly joined UKIPper is notorious for publicly threatening a feel, er, uh, female MP with rape bizarre opinions on women's rights and the age of sexual consent quote unquote depending on the child oh oh sargon what are you doing <laughs> holy shit buddy i figured you were gonna fuck this up somehow but you're like going you're going super speed on this you just <laughs> you're like sonic fast when it comes to this shit i don't understand what the fuck is going on now, what's my opinion on this? I'll give you my honest opinion. I think Carl was probably taken out of context in regards to uh, depends on the child and maybe misspoke or there's a larger context to the conversation. You see, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because you'd have to be a real piece of shit to take some audio and selectively play it and try to paint the other person is like some kind of weird child groomer or sex predator you know i mean you'd have to be you'd have to be a scumbag to do that huh carl but i'm not a scumbag i wouldn't do that now i can't speak for everybody else i mean other people will have different opinions on your statements about uh, it depends on the age of the child i could picture them saying things like i don't know like this well i mean to me that says he's uh <laughs> he's definitely not weird He's definitely not grooming them. It's really fucking creepy. But, you know, that's not me. I'm a good boy. I'm a sweetie. That's why the sweetie squad is full of love and kindness, Carl. Because we don't, uh, we don't politically assassinate other people because they make fun of our suit. <laughs> now, I would call what's happening to you right now, there's a, there's a phrase for it. Uh, it's poetic justice. You ever, you know, it's a little bit of poetry. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme, mm -hmm. every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. To see your attempt at black PR basically thrown back in your face, to see the literal thing you tried to do one week ago, now done to you. I mean, that's got to sting. You can't get really offended about it, can you? I mean, you can't get angry with the mainstream media for doing to you what you essentially tried to do to me. Now, everybody in my chat knows I am the Zoomer groomer <laughs> building an army of children to uh, populate my digital outer heaven. You know, that that's what I do. I'm the master manipulator of that. But I'm fine with that. I, I can live with that. You can throw those accolades at my feet. It's not like I'm a, a little bitch. It's, <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like I would threaten to sue somebody for saying things about me that are in context or out of context that are gen you know uh uh i was gonna say genuine disingenuous or even true i can live with it i like banter the back and forth that's fun but um you know some people are inclined to sue they're they're kind of soy riddled bitches when somebody takes a shot at them like say sargon of a god i'm looking for a british lawyer who is interested in discussing a potential lawsuit about libel and slander by the UK media. Please ask them to email me. And that's up on his uh, Facebook account. 
If you, if you have any good lawyers you can recommend to Sargon, Dissue newspapers, quoting him saying things, feel free to uh, to hit him up. He needs your help. Got to, uh, you, gotta, you gotta jump in there. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't even have this section prepared. Like I said, originally this week was really going to just be Bunty King, Matt, and uh, Shit Rat. Like, that was, that was my lineup. But Sargon is just, I, I don't know how he does it, but he fucking walks into one trash fire after the other. It's really bizarre to me. Oh, by the way, Sargon, number update. Number update. Uh, let's let's see where where are we sitting? Let me just refresh here. Let me, <laughs> let me refresh a little bit here. A uh, fourteen thousand people watching Sargon. I, I saw that you went on uh, Stephen Crowder. You only got twelve. Oof. Even a guy with two and a half million subs couldn't get people to listen to you. That's got to hurt a little bit. But hey, I think you'll be fine, <laughs> right? Because this is this is gonna go nowhere. This won't affect you. I'm sure it looks good for the uh, you know UKIP political party. I'm sure they love it. I'm sure Nigel Farage loves seeing everything that he built torn down by your stupidity. And we all know that you you were genuine when you joined the party. That you you uh, really cared about UKIP. UKIP was the thing that mattered to you. It's not like there's audio leaks of you saying otherwise. You know, it's not like it's not like that exists. No, I mean, I think you're interested in, in getting more involved with the party politics, right, since you're now a member, or at least are in the no, process really, of being fitted. I'm interested in any kind of party politics. Then why did you join the party? <clears throat> so I have something to support. Yeah, but you don't have to join a party to support it. You can just, like, vote and go to the sidelines, but you specifically decide to... Do you think I should to tell to... thousands of people not to join UKIP? Well, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, is that if you want to be involved in the internals of the party politics, you become a member. If you want to vote for them, you go to the ballot box and you vote. Yeah, but I want, I want to declare my colours. I'm not interested in getting involved in internal, internal party politics. Well, you could have just said, well, I support UKIP and just not join then. I mean, it sends a different message. Yeah, I know, but this sends a weightier message. Yeah, but the thing is, is that, like, does it, though? I mean, you've already got every... I don't, I don't think it does, because I think if you're declaring as a member, you're going to have, like, internal access. You're going to be given options to canvas and such for us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think I, I think that you're when you consciously opt in for something like that, I think you're declaring a little bit of an interest in that. There we go. Okay, well, I, I guess I'll have a different opinion on that one. Hmm, fair enough. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not really interested in the, the, in the internal politics, but I, I am interested in being able to say, no, I'm a member of UKIP, and therefore, as in, when I'm arguing with a, an SJW or a lefty or a socialist or something like that, I mean, they're all members of, of Labour. Why the fuck wouldn't we become members of a different party? I only joined UKIP so I could dunk on those feminists. I only joined UKIP to teach those fucking SJWs a lesson. I'm using this political fucking party just just to have a quick quip when I'm arguing with retards on the internet. I don't care about your politics. I don't care about, you know, spreading the word of your party. I'm only here just so I can say I'm a member of UKIP to make fatties on the internet mad. Well, that was a fair trade. I'm sure Nigel Farage thanks you for your service. I'm sure that worked out really well for them. What could possibly go wrong with the waiter from Applebee's saying ridiculous shit that's getting dredged up? And I know this is a black PR campaign. I know that the mainstream media is shit. Everybody knows that the mainstream media is shit. But I highly doubt it ends here. See, they're only now just looking into you. And they're finding the surface level shit. I, I can't even imagine what they'll go digging for. I can't even imagine... Once they start talking to people that you grew up with or new or your neighbors and shit like that, like these people are going to fuck you. They're going to bend you over and they're going to fuck you in front of all of Britain. And you're going to damage you, Kip, because of it. Because you're an egomaniac and you don't give a fuck about you, Kip. You only just wanted to use it as another thing to latch on to. Typical fucking skeptic behavior. You guys always do this shit. You know, that's why... Uh, let me see if I can find it. Where is it? That's why this fucking picture exists, Sargon. Because it accurately describes what you do. You go from group to group to group, co-opting or killing it. You drive it into the dirt. 
I think Kekistan probably is one of the better examples of that. You go on poll and you steal their memes. You monetize it and you use it as a fucking cudgel to argue with those SJWs. And at the same time, you turn around and you tell the alt-right and people that browse poll that you don't think white people exist, that um, that uh, they should race mix and have Jewish babies, that you're proud to be a part of the white genocide. You literally go to a group, steal their shit, and then spit in their face. <laughs> You've done it with every single fucking group. And what's really funny is at MythCon, the liberalist had a stream. And this is up on YouTube. You can go watch this. And as the liberalists are sitting there handing out brochures to people, they're actually arguing with one another about you and Kekistan and the shit that you do. And you can hear them talking to each other saying, thank you for not wearing a fucking Pepe shirt. Thank you for not wearing Kekistan gear. That shit is fucking cringe. So even the groups that you make and then shit on on your way out are aware of what you do. And here's the Grim Reaper Sargon knocking on the door of UKIP. So he can mount fucking Nigel Farage's head over his fireplace as a trophy. Well done. Well done, buddy. That's uh, that's, uh, that's some good going there. Oh, let's see now. Is that I think we're caught up on Sargon of Applebee's. That's where it sits now. I, I do know that he has an interview. <laughs> I do know that he has an interview scheduled with the BBC. He did it. He sat down for three hours with the BBC and they're going to use four minutes of it, which just, uh, it's going to be a fucking nightmare. Especially with the Times and everybody else writing about what they're writing about. If you don't think, I mean, if they weren't going to fuck with you before, they they are definitely going to now, now that the other media has picked it up. And it's really weird to me, because I could swear I remember it was either with Andrew Anglin or Richard Spencer, you berating them and saying that they were basically shills because they were willing to go interview with the mainstream media. That was an accusation. That was something you threw out at them, saying what shitty people they were because they were willing to talk with mainstream journalists. Because what did they expect to happen? And now fast forward like six, seven months, and you're out there interviewing, the B getting interviewed by the BBC. So I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I'm sure it's going to be a shit show. I'm sure it's going to be an absolute fucking hit piece. So, uh, well done. Thank you for showing me how politics is done. This has been a brilliant demonstration of how to really save the West. Squeaky, squeaky. Good, good, good going. All right. Let's, let's remove that. There we go. Let's, uh, I'll read some super chats here, and then we'll get into the, the bunty side of this. I, I think you guys are going to like that. Let me just, let me just fix that up here. No, oh, there we go. So this is your opportunity uh, to go grab a drink, get some popcorn, go take a piss if you want. We'll do uh, like 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of this, and then we'll jump into Bunty. Trying out different formulas here for how to make this, this work smoothly. Get everybody happy and satisfied. So let me just pull this up. Uh, pull this up and we'll, we'll go take a look at it here. I think it's under this tab. You're going to have to give me a minute. Might slow down a little bit. I'm streaming. I'm streaming from a fucking laptop. It's got the power of nothing behind it. But I make it work. I make that boomer technology work for me. All right, here we go. I will try to hit as many of these as I can. Like I said, so it's 2:30 where I am right now. At 2:45, we will jump back in to more of the uh, more of the shenanigans of the liberalist rationalist skeptics. God, every fucking name these people come up with is the most pretentious shit. Who calls himself that? Who, who fucking labels himself a rationalist? Who calls himself skeptic or liberalist? Fucking Christ. You'd think with people that use their face as brand marketing that they'd be a little more in tune with picking something that doesn't scream, I'm a fucking retard when it comes to this. All right, almost there, folks. Sorry, shitload so slow. Where are we here? Okay. Let's go through some of these. 
Oh, here's a nice one from Fash Bandicoot. Oh, let me make sure my audio is working good. Here's a nice one from Fash Bandicoot. It says, press S to spit on Jewish orphans. Ooh, it's a little bit harsh, but he wants you to press F, S chat. Show, you, show how much uh, you care, that tender loving care of the Sweetie Squad. The Orange Cow, Jim, you faggot. Do Deviants After Darks. I am planning, or Deviant After Dark. I am planning on doing that. The Australian Patriarchy. I have the mind of a child. Groom me. Consider yourself groomed. Sinak 8, Jim, I don't want to be a leader. I would rather play my stupid games. Wants to be a politician now. Yep, that would be a, a lovely one to put in there. I'll, I'll have to grab the sound bite sometime. Uh, one from Steven here, no message. Thank you very much. Weston Redwood, 36 years ago, Jim forced me into his van and did unspeakable things to me. Pound me too. Forgot the hashtag there. VG Spook, since I'm 12 and a half, I get to lead the whole squadron of 12 year olds, right? Right, Commander Mediker, Lord of the Troll Army, you groom me for this. I have been working to groom as many online child trolls as possible. That's what I'm known for. The Orange Cow, Jim, what's your view on the Soy Father spurging out about TLDR? Uh, yeah, in the the opening, that uh, first video, I believe that's taken from his response to TLDR, or Teal Deer, as he's known. Uh, Teal Deer left a comment on his video. Uh, the comment disappeared. And Sargon did a 20-minute video response to the comment disappearing. I'm actually willing to give Sargon the benefit of the doubt on this. Um, I've done a video before about YouTube's comment system showing that uh, it fucks with comments. I mean, I've seen that happen. So, again, I'm, I'm actually willing to take his word that he didn't try to delete it. But nonetheless, he did a 20-minute video response to Teal Deer. Uh, just saying that he doesn't have an ego, but then going on to talk about how he was going to hang out in a hot tub with Trump, basically. From first last ER Jim stream one day, he's the best and only alt-right YouTube critic we've got. Anyway, Light Yagami was right. Name the Jew. Heart attacks now. Oh uh, yeah, I like ER stuff. He does good videos. Cosmic Dogarin, do you like Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, no, I don't. I see you reference it in your videos sometimes, and I saw a video of you riffing on someone doing a bad job at showing their deck. Uh, no, I'm not a Yu-Gi-Oh guy, but I am familiar with it. Uh, check these fives. Get ready for the circus. Uh, emoji to smug chuckle. Uh, there we go. Let's see if we've got some good ones here. Uh, from Random Furfag. Jim, is Ava safe? I know you have your Cambodian locked away so she can't be eaten. Without a gun, without countermeasures. Do you have from Jeffrey Da? I mean, John Ga? I mean, Carol the Wolf. I'm not sure what Caro is up to just now. I know the furry community is uh, having a bit of a tizzy fit over the shit that got uh, got leaked. I know that um, they're doing the hashtag not all furries at the moment. And I know that Caro is denying a lot of this. Uh, like I said in the video, you know, time will tell which way it goes. Was he a victim of super hackers from Iran? Or is he a... F <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. Well, saying zoophile makes it seem so tame compared to what the material that was being passed back and forth. Uh, people fucking cutting off the heads of puppy dogs and raping them. So, fuck, I don't know. See, now, now you brought my mood down, thinking about that guy doing that shit. White Pill Prol. I'll pay good money for a ridiculing Sargon stream. Edward Bernays. I'm listening to Pour Some Sugar on Me by Dead Leopard. To get rid of the memories, Jim. The video still haunts me. Oh, let's see. From Mike Thomas, Boogie2988 found dead in his room this afternoon by police after he called 911 over a mashed potato emergency. Dozens of bad dragon products were found surrounding his body. Cause of death is uncertain. It's amazing how many times Boogie dies. Dragonzord69 and Shala Jim, have you heard Zarga or Suit Gone? is looking for a lawyer to fight UK media slander. Well, this lawsuit 2.0. Uh, yep, well, we just we just took a look at that. Uh, I'm aware that he is hiring internet lawyers for people writing things he didn't like. I don't I don't know which way it's going to go. I do like the names though. Suitgon uh, is a new one. I saw somebody else saying that he worked at Chucklebees, which I, I almost think is better than Applebees. So, that's uh that's some good stuff. From HTRTU, the English follow the principle that when one lies, one should lie big and stick to it. 
They keep up their lies, even at the risk of looking ridiculous. Joseph Goebbels really makes you think. Rainbow Train Station, Sargon's ego is a problem. Aside from that and Candid, is your issue with him that he can be quote mind, and that will hurt or er, hurt groups like UKIP by affiliation? I uh, know I think I, I was pretty plain uh, with what <laughs> what I thought about Sargon in the last stream. Uh, he's got a ridiculous sized ego, and he huffs his own farts, and uh, he's just kind of a retard, a little bit of a dum dum. Uh, so I like I like uh, laughing at that. As for, you know, him in relation to UKIP, I think the leaked audio kind of paints a picture of somebody that's just, again, using something they don't care about for their own means. And uh, they, don't, they don't give a fuck kind of what happens to the party. Uh, Lodi and Loris, cocaine is a hell of a drug, eh, Carl of Swindon? Spurgmeister, Matt has a video titled, I Hate Dirty Bathrooms. He talks about using women's restrooms, another funny one titled personal hygiene items and Walmart don't mix. He wants someone to eat his butt, Jim. Well, it's actually quite surprising that you brought up the subject of eating ass. Uh, you're going to find out why in about five minutes. In about five minutes, Bergmeister, we're going to be talking about eating the butt. So uh, prepare for that. From Jason Moore, plot twist. Carl Benjamin is Kiro the Wolf. Nobody saw it coming. Nobody saw it coming. Tony Batterow, Godspeed, James Tristan. Praying for you on my birthday. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Lord Odin, finally I get to catch Jim live for once. Groom me harder daddy. Yes, I have a, a proclivity for raising child soldiers on the internet. Thankfully, I've been called out for that. Eternal, <laughs> Eternal Nemesis. Not watching this right now, watching archives of the kill stream, but definitely wanted to help you out with your suitless Ebola cancer aids, my paused friend. Keep up the good work, my dude. Nico Nico Nee. Read a few more here and then we'll jump back in. Dragonzord69. Maybe Carl was playing 4D Rick and Morty chest with the age of consent comment. He obviously is trying to get these Muslim votes. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't actually think of that. Unrealized Loyalist. Thank you for the laughs, Jim. Good work. Aaron. Favorite appetizer at Applebee's. Uh, none. Applebee's food is fucking awful. Uh, that's kind of... That's why the joke works on so many levels. Uh, Applebee's is a terrible restaurant, and I would advise against eating there. Toad McKinley, I heard a small dog. Is Jade cooking dinner? Uh, well, yeah, she is preparing it. If she was cooking it, you wouldn't have heard the dog, now would you? And finally, Merlot Williams. Jimbo, Sweetie Squad shirts when? I have no plan on merchandising anything at the moment. Maybe, maybe when I need to really pour some money into Outer Heaven... We'll talk, but uh, there's no merch at the moment. Okay. I, and again, I'll read. I'll read some more later on here. Just trying to keep a nice balance between the two things. All right, let's see. I, I want to make sure I do this right, because we're going to have to go to some YouTube videos in relation <laughs> in relation to, to Bunty. I saw a few comments, too, in chat. Um, people bringing up Tommy C., and Tonka saw? Uh, yep, I, I am aware of the Tommy C stream. I know Tommy is not a fan of mine. I'm also aware of Tonka saw's repeated comments about me nearly everywhere on the internet. I am quite aware of that, but uh, I'm playing the game right now. You know, I'm on the court and I don't have time for bench warmers. So I'll let the B team sit on their ass while I'm doing fun stuff over here, doing the big boy stuff over here. I mean, I can only listen to Tonka so many fucking times before I want to put a bullet in my head? Donga mad. Jim use magic fireplace. Make fun of people. Donga no like. Donga break boulders. Use rubble. Attack Jim tribe. Donga no like that. Wrestle, wrestle, Jim. Jim wrestle, wrestle. Donga, 100 old. Not internet people. Yeah, I get it. I get it, Tonka. I've heard that shit for like three weeks now. Saying that I'm invited on the Kumite. Originally, you were supposed to come on the Ralph Retort. You didn't want to do it. You've also made comments talking about how you only wanted to be on stream with me if you could make some money. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to you wanna have a little back and forth, you can always show up on the kill stream. You're, you're, always, you're always welcome on the fucking kill stream. But I'm not coming on the morning kumite, okay? Uh, I'm not going to boost your numbers for you because you can't put on an entertaining show. But you and Tommy can get drunk together and cry like teenage girls on the internet. That's fine. So anyway, moving along to more entertaining shit. Aside from some 
dumb fuck that wants to set up fights between anybody that makes fun of them on the internet. Uh, let's talk about Bunty. Now, I'm sure you remember the I'm a cuck guys thing. I'm sure, I'm sure that's still fresh in your fucking head. Well, uh, you know, Ethan and a few other people stumbled on some other Bunty related things and I thought, God, I want to talk about that. I really want to talk about that because it follows right at the end, right at the end of his story in regards to the girl that cucked him. And he's talking about other people that he's dating and just past relationships. And he had a line in there that I think um, is rather illuminating as to what's going on. So let's let's listen to this. And we're going to go take a look at a few streams that he's been on to see why she would think this. And when things started to when things started to wane, when the romance started to kind of uh, die down, we talked to each other about it. We were like, "This is this is a problem." Like she was like, "You're not, you're not. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't like the way you smell." <laughs> That's one of the things that she said to me. She's like, "I just can't stand your smell." I remember her saying that. Of course, it hurt at the time. Well, that's interesting. Told him that he stinks. Uh, I wonder why she thought that. Well, let's find out why this girl thought he smelled bad. Give me one minute. Just one second here. I'm going to go mute. I'm going to get the videos lined up and we're going to take a look. Poor Stinky King. Just can't, can't catch a fucking break, can he? All right. Give me one moment. into each other it was like really yeah. like this want to make sure i'm at the right time codes here get everything lined up all right let's let's do share screen i think this will do it if not i will adjust give me one sec okay this was a bunty king stream uh, he was doing with uh, sugar tits and uh, they talk about some interesting things <clears throat> so let's let's listen in let's see what he's talking about maybe this will Give us an idea of why she said he was a stinky boy. A dirty, smelly, dirty, stinky boy. Like, it was super sexually charged. It was also, like, just, like, pure, like, romance in the sense. And she would be, like, she would, like, 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 I won't, like, she hasn't talked to me in about, like, uh, a little while now. And the reason why she hasn't talked to me is because she's really trying to keep her distance because she knows that she's fucked up. She knows that she's, she, fu she fucked up. Mm -hmm. the entire relationship she fucked up the relationship like big time because she was she was actually did something so retarded mm -hmm. and i don't want to bring it up here it really doesn't matter but it's just like she did something really bad mm -hmm. and so she's keeping her distance because she she sees me and she sees what i'm doing she sees how the connections i'm making with people and how people like are coming to me and people are starting to look at me as this person that when i talk about politics they want to pay attention yeah she's like she knows i'm growing my platform she knows that i'm i'm, I'm making something of myself and she doesn't want to weigh me down and on being and talking to her did weigh me down quite a bit because it was it was really hard because like i would want to whenever she had a moment where she was feeling bad about herself i wanted to mm -hmm. make her feel good and i would do this at, at expense at the expense of myself mm -hmm. i'd want to i am fairly certain i have it lined up at the right time just bear with me we're getting to it i'd like want to make sure that she was feeling good and uh so plus He's the thing is like yeah, so, I stopped thinking about myself, but it was like it was like really crazy because like like we would say crazy shit to each other. Like I was like I was like I want you to fucking piss on me. Like I'm not even <laughs> fucking joking. I'd look at her. I want you to fucking piss on me. This is the one girl that could piss on me. Like I would fucking <laughs> let her pee on my dick any day. It was amazing. I was like I never I never on the dick on the chest. I don't give a fuck. Like I've never been into peeing for like okay. for like sex stuff. But I was right. like I was like if you want to pee on me, you can pee on me. I don't give a fuck. That's how much I loved her. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the only thing is like no shitting, but this is the first girl. Okay. Uh, I loved her so much. I love the girl that cucked me so much. I want her to pee on me. I want her to just piss all over me. Just saturate me. Give me a shower. Make, make my stinky ass smell pretty. And uh, at the end there, he says, but no shit. Okay. I've got, <laughs> I've got fucking standards, but it might not be that, uh, might not be that clear cut. Might not be that clear cut might be another clip out there where he says some different things so let's go take a look let's see if we can find out again what's up with all this uh 
All this stinky talk. Why is he a dirty boy? And uh, and the reason why we're not together is because of some. some Okay, I've got the clip lined up. Chad, if you can if you can figure out where this is going to go, uh, good luck to you. Might want to have a, a barf bag ready. You might see some familiar faces uh, involved here. Oh, oh, is that a stream with is that a stream with uh, Tonka and failure? I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised Tonka didn't challenge Bunty to a fight for talking to him on the internet. But let's listen. Let's uh, listen and see where this goes. Some major stupidity. But uh, I'm hoping that one day that'll just like kind of be resolved and, and things will just go back to normal because we were, we were really quite a good item together. Hmm. Uh, and uh, in terms of like, uh, in terms of like, I was, yeah, I, I love, like, it's, it was just the best. It was the best. <laughs> Eating her butt was amazing. It was just the, wonderful. I'm sorry. What, what did he say there? Did he say, did he say eating her butt was amazing? I, I, what, but what was that? What, what did you say there, buddy? And then what happens? Even poo poo comes out. The other poo poo's out, huh? And then they eat the poo poo. Let's, let's listen on. Let's see uh, what else he brings to the table. Yeah, I think that's the first time I've, like, first time I've ever done it. And, uh, and I just remember that the first time we, like, did it, she was like, I was like, I was like, I want to eat your ass. Like, I don't, she didn't ask me. I was like, no, no. like, I want to eat your ass. Like, I've never wanted to do this. Like, I'd let her fucking pee on me. I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm into every, like, with her, I'm into everything. Like, with other girls, um, I look at them, I'm like, eh, you know, it, 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 it's something bad. Like, I love eating pussy, okay? Mm -hmm. But there's been girls that I've, I've come across where I'm just like, ah, I don't know if I should eat their pussy. And that's a bad sign because I love eating pussy. I love eating pussy. And having people piss on me and eating their ass. That is the top 10. Look at, okay, I want you to, I, okay, let's put this into perspective. Why would this girl say that he smelled? I want you to look at his face. Look at the size of that fucking beard. Now, I want you to imagine what it's like to have a beard like that. If you've ever had a beard like that, it's probably not difficult to imagine this. You're out, you're having a meal, maybe a little food gets stuck in there. You got to be meticulous about keeping yourself groomed and cleaned. Otherwise, that's going to be a, a magnet for shit like grease and bad smells and just drippings from whatever you're eating. Now, imagine if what you were eating was urine and feces. Imagine what that beard would smell like. Imagine, imagine being the girl that laid in bed with Bunty King and, you know, she rolls over on her side. She's going to snuggle up against his chest and it smells like a fucking toilet. It's like a sewer pipe exploded. Because all up in his beard are just little nuggets, little fucking dingleberries, little stains of urine, just all over his face. I love it. Here, here's a, a bad thing about eating pussy. I see you're a bearded gentleman. The flavor oh, tends oh, to... Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I what love about it. a black light? Whatever, whatever <laughs> this is happening. That could be he even confirms it. He loves eating pussy. And failure's bringing up the beard thing. And he's like, no, no, no. I fucking love it. I love the fact that that's a, a reality for me. Ugh. I'd wear, I'd, I'd rock a fucking, I'd fucking rock a, I'd rock a, um, uh, I'd rock a, uh, what the fuck was I going to say? Like a black light on my face any day. <laughs> any day. I'd rock a black light on my face after fucking eating pussy any day, man. Bunty King has given us the Kevin Gates speech on eating the booty like groceries. Uh, I've never heard of that speech, but yeah. Malcolm from the North, man. How you doing, bro? Fuck, Malcolm, Malcolm is cool. a beautiful man. He is very cool, very cool. I like him a lot, man. Very chill guy. You know, like I love seeing, like, you know what? This is gonna sound kind of racist. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm just gonna say it anyway because you know what? It's not racist because I'm not a racist. But it's always nice to see like cool black people. <laughs> okay, I think I think we'll cut it there. You know, see the cool black people. That's good. That's good. Um, where are we here? Get rid of the window there. So Bunty. Bunty gets his heart broken by another woman. She's she's cheating on him. She's cucking him. She's seeing another guy. And one of her complaints after the relationship is you smell bad. And then he goes and gives interview uh, to different people telling them he likes piss and he likes shit and he likes eating ass. And uh, he loves the smell of pussy juice on his fucking beard. And then he wonders why her complaint might have been 
you smell like a fucking trash heap. <laughs> you know, I thought this PSA was made for, uh, uh, you know, a different group of people, but I think this might actually apply more to Bunty than anybody else. So pass this along to Bunty King for me. This video is tailor-made for him. There's no getting away. Take the Take the Step out on the street, what do I smell? Shit that's sinking to high hell. I hold my breath, I step away, but everywhere I go, there's no getting away. You know what? I, I like that so much, I'm gonna play it one more time. I really, I want you to be able to clip it and just send it along to him. There's no getting away. <laughs> these fucking skeptics i swear to god it's you dig a little bit and you just find the weirdest shit sitting there at the core there's always some there's some fucking story somebody's getting cucked somebody wants to eat shit somebody somebody's flirting with trannies on facebook somebody's running around talking about all the gay sex they had while they impersonate a mute autistic lesbian on twitter it's just right under the surface but they're, they're, they're just, I don't know, they've had like a cloak of invisibility wrapped around them. It's just been on them for a couple of years, so nobody really has peeked under the veil. And just giving it a good old look Now, uh, Now, today's stream, a little bit shorter than usual. I just wanted to focus on these two things. Uh, I've got a better one planned for next weekend. Uh, the Sargon thing, I just, I had to touch on it. You can't not talk about that. You can't not bring that up, because it's such a disastrous clusterfuck uh next week we will be talking about david shitrat and the autism forums uh yeah believe it or not david has autism and uh uh he was quite the poster at an autism forum in fact it's kind of like a david shitrat special next week we're gonna be talking about where that ten thousand dollars went uh, the people that were involved in raising that ten thousand dollars and their relationship to the skeptic community because you might find some surprising uh, connections between Shit Rat, that fundraiser, and other groups like Kilroy and Kraut and T. We'll be taking a look at uh, Monday Matt and learning about his meth-abusing girlfriend uh, that cucked him. Again, another, another uh, tragic cucking. There's some Kraut audio leaks, which are amusing to some degree. Uh, they'll be edited, so the funny parts we can listen to, because you don't want to sit through three hours of Kraut and his friends talking about just everything. Just, just fucking everything. It'll be a little more bunty as well. So it's it's a packed show. It's a packed show. We'll make the Sunday fun day thing a regular occurrence. Shoot for about two hours each time. Now I've got some super chats that I promised I'd read from last week, so I'm going to dedicate some time to doing that. Catch up on the ones that we have today. I'll put up the little sign here. Uh, again, if you want to watch a live stream that was, you know, you were you weren't around for it, you can go check it out on Hell's channel. It will be over on Hell's channel. Always, uh, you know, every time Hell's a good guy, good guy likes to put shit up for people to watch. So that is where the copy of this will be. You think of it like a little archive, uh, a tiny little archive. Uh, to everybody else, I hope you had a a nice little hour to kill. Hope you had a, a couple of smug chuckles before you go out to Applebee's with your family for a nice Sunday dinner. Uh, if, you're, if your waiter asks you if you've read Loki, immediately run out of the restaurant. Uh, he'll potentially be trying to groom you, depending on uh, your age, I guess. I don't know. I know it's slanderous to say, but I read it in the newspaper. 
So, you have to go with that. <laughs> this fucking group of people. Oh, they all come out of the woodwork. All at the same time. All at the same time. It's the same fucking names every time. You got Kraut and his little group with Shit Rat and Wasley and just the other other hangers on. But, I, you know, I will give Kraut this. He's more kind of isolated doing his own thing. Then you've got Sargon. And you've got Tonka and Tommy just running around like chickens with their fucking heads cut off. And they're all just taking the best shot they can. But they just stumble on their feet because they're fucking idiots. So what better way to deal with it than to laugh at their stupidity? So every Sunday, we're going to be laughing at their stupidity. Because there's always a good week's worth of shit to smugly, to smugly chuckle at. Okay. Let us get into last week's Super Chats that I missed. I'll, I'll read a good portion of them. Go over the ones I got from today. And then uh, we, will call it, we will call it an early evening. I'm sure if you want more details on Sargon's battle with the mainstream media, I'm pretty sure uh, Ralph will be covering it on the kill stream on Monday. Uh, you can check out his Twitter for times and locations in relation to that. And give me one second. Let me grab a drink. You know what? I'm going to play the opening one last time while I go get a drink so we've got something up on screen. Uh, and then we'll hit Super Chats. I mean, when I get an interview with Donald Trump in the White House, are you going to be like... Well, I mean, anyone that's used Donald Trump, are you going to do that? If you Google my name, you'll find lots of news articles about me. Farage knows who I am. I'm going to debate on MythCon next week. This isn't about my ego. This is about your ego. I've been on Joe Rogan. So much better than all the other internet players. What do you think I'm doing the BBC interview today? I have no idea who you've met. No idea what you do. I don't know where you go to you like you're insecure and a little bitch. But yes, I'm the most important person in the world. Putting in regular contact with the leader of UKIP. UKIP is like going to your auntie's barbecue. Some degree of separation to Donald Trump. Get to meet Nigel Farage and have Nigel Farage know who they are before they even say hello. I speak to them quite regularly. I don't know what any of you do. Why don't you join UKIP? I think Jim's being ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, that's a redundant one there. Farage knows who I am. Give me one separate, one degree of separation to Donald Trump. The smug, it's getting bigger and gaining strength. Meeting Farage, I actually sat in a meeting with results. I met him twice. Pretty in regular contact with the leader of UKIP. What the hell is that? This is actually the second position where I've been one degree of separation from Trump, it's, it's getting closer and closer and closer. But other things I will do will make the news. And you know they'll make the news. And if you Google my name, you'll find lots of news articles about me. The perfect storm of self-satisfaction. Argon, listen to me. In your madness, you've taken individualism to such an extreme that you're destroying the world around you. Who cares? Okay. Well, hopefully you're settled. We'll go over the super chats now again. Mainstream is done. You can watch the archive of it over on Hells. Let me just pull these up and we'll we will jump right in. And again, uh next Sunday, fun day. Same time, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Be waiting there. From Nightingale Berserker, I only watch this for the laughs, and I wonder, don't these people have anything better to do than pushing their opinion on others? Big fan, by the way. I, you know, I, I don't know. Somewhere along the line, I think it changed from uh, having a laugh at retards to thinking that you're changing the world somehow by making YouTube videos, which is kind of ridiculous, especially when you put it into perspective by comparing it to multiple other channels look at a, a video game channel pulls in millions of views on a video they don't they don't have that mentality they're just putting out shit for people to laugh at and watch from Elroy Jetson Carl stick to what you know and fetch people their fucking water only thing you'll achieve is being in the paper five years from now when we find out your fat ass is in a bathtub with a toaster at the bottom Ooh. Buddha Bot, Cocktails, Pulu, Mega Manly, Harkinen, Jim, 30 year old groomer, last name. Well, thank you very much. Random facts Bunty the Butthole Bitter, Bunty the Butthole Biter, 
It's a hell of a new nickname for our, uh, our favorite little skeptic pal. Juicy Kisses. The only difference between YouTube skeptics and SJWs is the SJWs are more open about their degeneracy. Ah, you might be right. Random Furfag. Jim, YouTube won't let me say G-U-N. So no one buy... Uh, okay. So buy one with my money and protect Ava from furries. I will protect my innocent little dog with my life. Veggie Bad, turn these degenerates into pillars of salt, Jim. HTRTU, nice to see cool black people. Foreshadowing.txt. Demand 77, or 7777. I'm 40. Can I get groomed too, or is it too late? It's never too late to be groomed. Welcome to the Sweetie Squad. Uh... <laughs> Pick up your trolling manifesto on your way to to the base. L. Dan, most cringe, Kraut, KOP, Sargon, Tonka, or Mundane Matt? Yeah, I mean, the, the original Kraut videos, again, the main focus was the, the Discord ops, the 24-hour Discord ops, uh, and that, that got leaked. I, I really honest, genuine here when I say, Kraut, for the love of God, use something other than Discord. Any other fucking program on the internet. Go look up IRC. Go find something old, something new. Tox. I, I don't care. Anything other than Discord. The majority of your fucking problems are because you use Discord. Scothy. Just came on here. Uh, stinks of Jews. Picked a good time. Amazing 1985. Press F for Boulder Remembrance. Random for fake Jim. Buy a gun with my money. Keep. Oh, we've got another one of those. Fox Anderson, Bouldergate was my intro to the sector of the interweb. Your expose on Matt has been uh, beneficial to me personally. Unlike Jordan Peterson, your work has really shown me how not to be a beta male bitch, in the words of Toad McKinley. Well, uh, glad I could help. Can Mary Salibo, between this shit beard thing and the <laughs> degenerate furry stuff, why do you want to make us barf? Uh, well, you know... Recounting the tales of the fucked up shit on the internet is half the fun. Um, yeah, you know, the amount of fucked up shit that's out there on different websites, it's really staggering, to be honest. And some of the stuff people say is funny. Uh, so it's always lovely to share. Philly Love, Kurt Eichenwald, Part 3. He claims he was Me Too'd mid-seizure, and I believe him. I know personally, every time I see an overweight Jew seizing on the ground... I make a beeline for that booty hole. Uh, that is true. Kurt Eichenwald recently told people that uh, he was raped while having a seizure. Uh, and he went into a 20, uh, it was like 20 or 22 post tweet chain talking about the trauma of going to the hospital and having them sew his ass back up because apparently he got the BBC while he was down on the floor seizing. I don't know. That must be the world's fastest rapist because like a seizure lasts like what, a minute? And it's a big fat dude flopping around on the ground. So I'm picturing our would-be rapist had to pin Kurt down while he's seizing all over the place. Get his pants down. Take uh, take the rapist's pants down. Fuck him and finish in like 30 seconds. I, I guess Kurt is telling us that he has the tightest ass on earth. Shadow Band, the absolute state of the street shitters. Oogie Boogie, Jim, if we can get designs made for Outer Haven's Sweetie Squad shirt, will you consider selling them? The legwork would be done. All you got to do is sell them. Great stuff as always. Keep it up, Jim. I usually, like when it comes to artwork and shit like that, I usually have uh, usually have my girl do it. Occasionally I'll use a picture other people will put out there. Uh, other pictures like, uh, <laughs> I saw this one today. Uh, where is it? There, there we go. Like that one. Everybody wants a face reveal? There you go. There I am. <laughs> Take a look, everybody. That's me. Leave that up on screen for a minute. Cicada RX, Tommy C thinks you're talented and great. He just thinks you are creepy. Supposedly, there's a call that makes you sound creepy. I'll send it to you later. Well, thank you for keeping me in the loop. Duralex Sadlex, how long has Bunty been bitching about this woman? Dude, get over it. Oh, uh, yeah, he has talked an inordinate amount of time about her, hasn't he? Robin Hilker, his beard is full of Ethan Brandberry. <laughs> Ethan Bradberries. Alex Henry, Bunty King looks like an Islamic terrorist version of Keemstar. I, I mean, I suppose, kind of, yeah. He does, he does have that a little bit, doesn't he? Okay, uh, pull this down. <laughs> this fucking picture. 
Okay. Oh, I lost my I lost my place there. HCRTE, what why the fuck would he offer that information? I, I don't know what compels people to go out and tell everybody they like to eat shit and drink piss. Um I guess some people just feel the need to share. AK forty seven your face. Bunty, I love you, but you stink like shit in the street. You were supposed to clean up afterwards, not reminisce about your ancestral home. And that's quoted to his ex. Joey Jojo, this is disgusting. Is this what intimacy mutated into? I'm going to be sick. What happened to simple, clean romance like kissing fat, delicious boobs? Uh, you know, that's boomer philosophy. All the kids nowadays just like to suck shit right out of somebody's ass. That is what they are geared up to do. Steven Stromboli, live fast, eat ass. Merlo Williams, gotta eat the booty like groceries. From Citizen Kane, have a good week, Jim. You're a poor who can't afford or who can't do Patreon here, so accept these shekels as a token of appreciation. Keep up the good work. P.S. Please say Opa. Well, there you go, Opa. Blantron McGowan, what video games are you playing right now? Oh well, you know I'll be honest with you, uh, I'm going to get a ton of shit for this. But uh, Blackface Kermit was not lying. I own a Switch, and all I do all day long is I play Nintendo Labo. I build. I build my little suits, and I march around my place. When people come to the door and I open it, and I'm like, how are you doing? I'm decked out head to toe in cardboard. Just just ready to start some shit. Uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm playing the 3DS at the moment. I got a 2DS on sale, because I don't need the fucking 3D feature. Because uh, there was some handheld shit that I wanted to play. Uh, well, let me see. I'll, I'll pull it out. Let's see what, uh, what shit I've been playing lately. Uh, Fire Emblems, Shadow of Lentia, Echoes is one of them. Uh, where was the other one that I was playing recently? Oh. And then Shin Megami Tensei, Devil Survivor Overclocked. I like handheld gaming, uh, but I'm not going to buy a PSP or a PSP Go or whatever the fuck the new variation, Vita. I'd rather stick to Nintendo because at least they've got a good library of shit. Lord Akira, Bunty King really upholding the stereotype of the creepy perverted Pajit. AAJJ, thank you for grooming me with your acorns, Mr. Meadow Coney. You're, you're very welcome. Angry Scotsman, thanks for the furfag blood for Crone Song. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic song. It's been around for like, I think it was up originally in 2010, maybe even earlier. It's been around forever. Joey Jojo, I would rather be an incel than a cuck any day. Stacey Ann, Jim, what kind of kid were you in high school? Jock, nerd, trench coat mafia druggie. Tell us about yourself. Also, you can't groom me. I'm a 36-year-old lady. Uh, well, I did play sports a lot uh, from elementary into junior high and high school. Uh, fuck. Played hockey when I was really young. Hockey and baseball when I was young, so elementary school. Uh, basketball. Oh, fuck. I never did. I never really did football. I never really did soccer. Uh, fucked around a little bit with tennis, but kind of stayed away from it. Just basic shit. I was never really into it. So you couldn't describe me as a jock. And I haven't read Loki, okay? So I couldn't be a nerd. And a trench coat, I don't even own a suit, let alone a trench coat. And the most drugs I've ever done would be marijuana and uh, alcohol. I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty clean guy, to be honest with you. So there's your answers, if that gives you any answer. Jeremy Joestar, how long before people need a breeding license in the EU? Plus, I hope Article 13 passes so people can make fun of Sargon, and he has to take it. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to do. They're going to need a license uh, before they can respond, aren't they? Pharaoh Owen, don't read this. Too late. Too late. White Void 43, Boogie 1488 is like Kenny McCormick. He always dies but never stays dead. A very good observation. Siri, say my name. Jim is the new Coney. Medicare 2018. Lord O and I have no money left, but Jim saying my name gets my 12-year-old pee-pee hard. Well, you are welcome, Lord Odin. Hopefully Monday Matt will not challenge you for the title of Odin. But uh, good luck. I hear he throws boulders. Callum, please, re uh, please react to Leafy Clone song parody, I Made It. I will, I'll tell you what, next weekend, I will play it on stream and we'll, we'll give it a listen. The United Bank of Money. 
Jim, when are you going to drop that video on the Emma Racebergs? I'm tired of being cock teased. Also, could you read the DeviantArt on DeviantArt on you called Medicare Learns His Lesson? I will look that up and I will read it next weekend. And I, I still have plans for laughing at MRAs coming up. Jack Winter, keep up the good work, Dad. Can't wait for a promotion to Sergeant and the Child Army. We will take Applebee's by storm. <laughs> Frank and Norgi, I re eternal. Hi, Priest of Keku. Super Chat Intermission is a good format, in my opinion. It works well to break things up and keep the next topic fresh. Thank you for the streams. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm looking for a format that works. I want to try to use... Uh, what the fuck is it? Um, they're Streamlabs. But not for donations. Because uh, they have like a feature where you... Well, I might not even need to use that. But if I could get the Super Chats to just scroll across the screen, that way if I miss some, they're automatically up there anyway. So at least they're recorded. Uh, because people have said I've missed a few uh, on occasional streams. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll get it worked out. Yeti Freight, keep it up, Jim. Hashtag Dicks for Wanksky. Finchy Bird, you're a dead man, Jim. I will make sure to go into hiding. Mega Killer X, I hope Dankula bails Sargon. Dude's gonna throw him under the bus. Why, well, I saw Dankula gave a speech um, at the same conference that Sargon did a video presentation. And again, Dankula wearing a suit, looked tailored, looked nice. Didn't have a chance to listen to his speech, but I'm sure it went well. Uh, Bilk Heller, what don't you like about Stefan Molyneux? Well, I like to make jokes about uh, Molyneux. Okay, uh, you know, the whole defooing thing I thought was funny. And the one dollar thing I thought was funny. But it's not really a dislike. Uh, I just like to tease a little bit. Christopher Grimm, I figured it out. Mr. Medicker has jaundice. <laughs> well, there you go, mystery solved. John Stewart, lawyer recommendation, better call Saul. John Blow, Noggins are a joggin. That is correct, my friend. Acorns are falling from the trees as we speak. Dan Man, will Sogon destroy the furry movement? I do not think he has the power to do that. Daniel Charney, Jim, can you comment on the Texas Trash Alley shooting video and the memes that spawned from it? If you haven't seen it, please react to it live on stream. Uh, we both know that I can't play that on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see what he's talking about, it should be up on LiveLeak. It's a video where... <laughs> how, how do I set this up? So you got two fat shirtless dudes, uh, father and son. Fat father has a handgun. Fat son has a shotgun. And there's a, another group of people, a couple, a man and a woman. And they're all arguing in an alley around a dumpster. And I can't remember exactly what it was that they were arguing over. Was it like who had access to use the trash? Or who could throw what in there? Uh, but it escalates pretty quickly. Uh, the dude getting more and more pissed off, calling them pussies for having guns. And uh, it, it's almost like that knife quote where it says, what are you going to do, stab me? And then it's quoted to a uh, man who was stabbed. Because he pretty much said, well, why don't you shoot me? Shoot me, you pussies. And he ended up rushing the father. The father fired a couple shots. I think he missed. And then the son unloaded two shots from a shotgun into the guy and killed him. And now they're both under arrest for murder, essentially. Or assault with a deadly weapon. I have no idea. But I've seen the video. Uh, it is funny stuff. And I've seen uh, the memes that have spawned from it. But yeah, I, I can't... Um, I'm sorry, Daniel. But I, there's no way I can play it on YouTube and react to it live for you. Maybe maybe if I find a suitable secondary streaming site that will let me get away with murder, uh, we can watch some spicy shit. Because there, <laughs> there's some videos out there that I would love to show people. Uh, you know what? Actually... Give me one second here. Okay. I'll tell you about one of the videos that I, I saw a long time ago. I don't know the name of it. You're probably not going to find it anywhere anymore because a lot of the sites that would host this kind of stuff are gone now. Um, but it's darkly humorous. And I think you'll understand why as I explain it. And it, it's, it's hard to just explain it. You'd have to see it. If you saw what I'm about to describe happening, you would probably laugh, even though it's very dark. So it, it happens in some third world shithole country, right? Like some Russian block fucking place. And uh, it's a dude at the top of an apartment building, and he's threatening to kill himself. And there are people filming this. 
Now, the guy's like, I hate my life. You know, it's, it's translated. They've got a translation and stuff. I hate my life. I don't want to live anymore. I'm going to kill myself. And the cops and the firemen and the crowd, they're all gathered underneath. And people are trying to figure out how can we go up and get him. You know, they're, they're sending cops up to try to get him down. A fire department wants to set up some shit so if he jumps, they can catch him. But they don't, they don't have time. The guy jumps. Now, you know, people in the comments talked about it a little bit, and I can't say how true it is or not, uh, but the guy didn't necessarily have the world's worst life. It wasn't like he was afflicted with something terrible. He wasn't in a supreme amount of debt. He was just depressed, and that's what led to this suicide, or suicidal ideation. So he jumps, right? And he jumps in such a way that he starts to... <laughs> he jumps in such a way that he starts to cartwheel. Okay, so I want you to imagine a dude jumping... I think it's like the 6th or 7th floor. He jumps from the 6th or 7th floor, and he starts kind of cartwheeling end over end. Or end over end, right? So his arms and legs are splayed, and he's just kind of... It's like a spinning top all the way down. Now, he wasn't the smartest man in the world, because what he didn't take into account was that there were balconies on all the apartments. That, that's what he was jumping off, I believe. So, so, you know, he jumps from, like, let's say the sixth floor. On floor five, he nails his arm on the balcony, and it slows him down. And it, it's like you can hear, like, a crunch. On floor four, his legs hit the balcony, and you can hear snaps. And every single balcony, all the way down, this dude is cartwheeling into, one after the other, and he cartwheels into so many of them, all shattering and breaking his bones, fucking his legs up, fucking his arms up, breaking his back, fucking his neck up. He hits all of them on the way down. And the most, it's, it's like a million to one kind of scenario. And it slows him down enough that by the time he hits the ground at the bottom, he doesn't die. But he's so crippled, he will never be, he will never be able to kill himself. There's like this dark irony to that. A healthy dude jumps off a building to kill himself and ends up crippling himself so much by the time he hits the ground that he won't be able to jump off a building again, even though now he has a real reason to want to do it. And yeah, I, I don't know where the video is. Uh, I, I watched this a long time ago, but um, it's a sight to behold. It's like the world's, uh, it's the world's most unlucky suicide is the best way to describe that. So yeah, there, there are videos that I'd love to show on stream and react to, uh, but the, again, there's no fucking way that YouTube would ever let them on. All right, let's move on. Colin Archer. It's a shame, or it's a shame Sargon went full retard. His attempt to paint you as a child groomer sure backfired, didn't it? Keep up the good work, Jimmy. Yeah, again, it's a little bit of poetic justice that the approach Sargon tried with me in regards to black PR essentially was done to him ten times harder by more reputable sources. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really sympathize, Sargon. Uh, you kind of get what you give, don't you? Snip, Sargon of Cucklebees. Or, I'm sorry, Sargon of Chucklebees. Siri, yep. Uh, Jim doesn't even have a lawsuit. Uh, that is correct. I do not. I do not. Black Cube Mystery, give us the order God Emperor Troll Exterminatus or Exterminatus for Fagus, and we, the loyal army of underaged butt puppets, shall comply. <laughs> you, you can't wield the Sweetie Squad at will like that. You've got to give it some thought, okay? Outer Heaven needs to plan its form of attack. David, Jim, will you give your input on the leaked Discord chat with Elmer Fudd in the stream? Or in this stream? Uh, no, that'll be next week. Uh, just to give a short preview of that, uh, it seems like all the callers, the people that like to call in to uh, the Killstream Ralph show, uh, they like to go into Kraut's Discord and record him and fuck with him. So they're like a ton of audio leaks of people going into Kraut's Discord just to fuck with him and recording him reacting to it. And I think it's making him paranoid now because he's under the impression that like Ralph is out to get him and that all the callers are part of this uh, this group to come get him. So I don't know what he's going to do about OPSEC, but it should be funny to watch. Circa Zero, Boogie is the new Kenny. Muhala Maimula. Jim, any coincidence that your video mentioned Ar Ar Iranian super hackers and the next day, 20 Iranian soldiers die? 
Was this a furry attack? Uh, yep, the Yiffers have taken revenge, and uh, they demanded blood, apparently. Hank Wimbledon, the skeptic, smugly chuckles as it strikes you. DJ Atomica, what does Sargon wear when he goes to court? His lawsuit. Oh, uh, there we go. Put that one in the joke book. We're saving that gem for later. Lady of Shallot, would a smug chuckle be a schmuckle? And the people... <laughs> And the person who does the schmuckle is a schmuckly. Am I just going, or I'm just trying to jog my almonds? Why well, I would say the person doing the schmuckle would be a schmuck. That's where I would have gone with it. Flying, uh, flying pigmen. Keep up the good work, Jim. Big fan. Thank you. Ten bucks stew. I honestly thought Soy Father was at least smart enough to never talk to Legacy Media. I guess he's just a walking ego with a beard. Pepperoni san. Why don't you and Sargon just mud wrestle in your suits? Well, somebody has suggested that I put on a luchador mask, fly out to another state, and fight him. Uh, but that's fucking retarded and gay, so I'm not really, I'm not really gonna do that. I know, Jim Trab or Jim Tribe, bad, moo. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Sorry, sorry, Tonga. Michael Bueller, Sargon is a political leech. Iron Gamer, hey Jim. Just got here after work. My boss loves your channel. Glad to hear it. Drew McTig. Jim, what's your favorite dinosaur and why? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Uh, Velociraptor. Uh, and why is it my favorite? Because it's the first one I could think of. Kaiju Shoshenki. Reaper cartoon is missing cultural liber or libertarians. Uh, somebody will have to get on that and put that on one of the doors. Hans Landa. I feel bad for Sargon. He's out there putting in the work trying to make Bongland a better place. But then I remember all the stupid shit he said. And I can't help but laugh at him. He is his own worst enemy. Oh, very true. John Titer, to avoid exotic TB, ask for good schools. It's a pro tip everybody should follow. From Sail or Sail <laughs> Sailor Harry. After, th or after 30 minutes of digging, bet they'll find a Sargon Sonic OC. Who, who knows what they're going to find? But the press now has him in their sights. Maybe that was triggered by the BBC interview. Uh, maybe other press outlets heard that he went to the BBC, or they heard what the BBC was going to be writing about and decided to all jump on the bandwagon. Uh, but either way, it's going to be it's going to be a rough couple of weeks. Midnight Cherry TV groomed balls to look sar <laughs> groomed balls to look like Sargon. Am I a sweetie? Uh, yes, you are. Welcome to the club, Indra Schminda. Oyaf Tooth. When when are we getting a video on H Bomber Guy? Uh, you're not. I'm not doing a video on H Bomber Guy. Snow J, Internet Insanity, Sargon of Kakad calling it. Oh, it's putting putting out his bet. Snow J is putting out his bet, thinking that video is coming. Dustin D. Hayes, Jim, why do all these people leave truckloads of incriminating evidence online? Matt, Sargon, even those couple of furries recently. They must not have fully functional brains or want to be caught. Uh, I, I could not tell you. I could not answer that. Super shiny skull leapied. Are we the Sweetie Squad now? I like that name. Uh, that name's been around for a while. Uh, after after a money badger said I was a sweetheart and asked me to write them an essay about feelings. Christopher Moores, check Twitter, sent capture Soig's recent YouTube post. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll take a look. Let's let's go. Uh, give me a second here quick break in the super chats folks let's go let's go see what this is all right just one second here well how long ago was that in that show i don't even know let's see if we can find it i'm not i'm not oh god i'm seeing a lot of pictures of people looking ass though oof a lot of a lot of pictures of that. Uh, you know what? Actually, where did he say he found this? Um, YouTube. Oh, you know what? Let's just go look at the YouTube channel. That's probably the easier way to do it. I hope it's something funny. I hope it's something entertaining. Let's go take a look. If it is, I'll throw it up on screen. So just give me a second. So you said recent YouTube posts? I'm going to guess community then? Is that what you're saying? Because they got rid of the discussion page. Because they're always fucking with shit on this website. 
Uh, I'm seeing something from three hours ago. But it looks like he's just linking to... What is this? Uh, yeah, it, it's just to an old video stream. Or an old uh, older video. So, whatever. Sorry. Okay. Andy M., come on, old man. Learn your programs already. LOL. Nathan, please explain to these new friends Ghost and TCR. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, this is why I'm not going to do that. One, you shouldn't be fucking feeding them every time they ask for shit. Uh, two, I don't want them running around acting like they know after they're explained. This isn't know your meme, okay? I'm not going to start giving out lore on everything. I mean, you saw what the fucking Medicare shit. Nobody knew about half of that stuff. Nobody even knew that Haberman got sued by a fat chick on Encyclopedia Dramatica, and that's how he got doxxed. But that story's been out there for like 10 years if anybody cared enough to go look for it. All right, I think we've read some of these. I'm getting towards... Right, back up. I'm just trying to... Just trying to get through the recent ones. Now I'm going to get a little helper program to make this go easier. PC Principal, do more Donga impressions. So awesome. Now you're going to have to clip it and use the one you got. Energy's X, does Destiny really believe what he says? There are some StarCraft II chats of him saying the N-word, and he's beaten his wife and <laughs> bullied his son on livestream. I don't know if I've seen the video of Destiny beating his wife. Um, that one I'm unfamiliar with. I, I don't know if that's been raised before. I'll have to go. I have to go look for a video of that. I guess. Ajac 1930. Do you have any good stories about H Bomber guy from his Medicar days? What is your favorite TF2 class? Uh, heavy to answer the second question. And the first one, not really. I mean, H Bomber guy was kind of around, but he was more a friend of Haberman. And uh, I guess Jordan a little bit. Uh, but he wasn't super active. He wasn't like a super active Medicare guy. Um, that's why there's not a lot of shit about him out there. But you will find bits and pieces here or there. From Noble Savage, you folk think furries are bad. Look at Scalies. That's a very fair point. Leo the Bum Tickler. Schmuck evolves to Schmuckle. Evolves to Schmuckle Huckle. Plus Moonstone equals Sargon. It's a little bit of... Uh, Pokemon lore for everyone. Kidnappa. Hey, Medicare. I picked up your channel about a month ago and I've been loving it. Just wanted to show my appreciation for the content. Glad you like it. Tom the Pussycat, the Gundam enthusiast. Hey, Medicare, please, what do you think about H Bomber Guy? I know it's the third one, but please just answer the damn question and make a video about him. Again, I don't have any motivation to make a video about H Bomber Guy. If you look at his content, what is. And he does long form videos. Um, he's talked about like Fallout and Dark Souls. I think he did like an hour, two hour video on, was it Sherlock? Uh, he's made fun of MRAs. Uh, he did a couple videos on Sargon. So, I mean, I, I don't know what you'd want me to talk about with uh, with H Bomber Guy. Adox, Medicare, please gas the furries for Papa Fuhrer. The doctor, how does it feel knowing you have tranny backers? Well,. Hopefully, Sargon doesn't find out. Otherwise, he might kidnap them. So keep it a secret. Mr. Abris, this stream has been great, but you should push the envelope a bit. Where's the art, Jim? I'm an artless motherfucker. Maybe I'll have CRP on sometime. He can art in it up a little bit. Get some of the drone cameras flying around. Have a good time. Royal, you ever look into those zombie hand... Er, you ever look into those Zoomer handheld emulators? Some pretty good ones out there now if you're into handheld gaming and classic throwbacks. Uh, not really. I, I'm fine with what I got. Zan... Uh, am I saying that right? Anhead? <laughs> I think so. Uh, v admitted he was bisexual on his last stream. Sargon better watch out. <laughs> he, may, he may have uh, somebody asking him for a date. Fidel Al-Rawi. Did you go to college? And if so, what did you major in? Uh, yes, I did go to college. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree. Uh, majored in education. Uh, didn't like education, so stopped it. And, uh, you know, I, I think my best advice for anybody that wants to go to college uh, and seriously pursue it, because you're going to find a very big difference between the first three years and when practicum, you know, when you're out in the field doing stuff, is pick whatever profession it is that you think you're interested in. Oh, make sure. OK, good. That didn't cut out. Uh, pick whatever profession it is that you think you're interested in and job shadow. Find somebody that does it and just ask them. You know, a friend of a family or something, or just a local business. 
and just ask them, can I come in and just, you know, do like intern work or, you know, assistant work for like a couple days or a week or just let me shadow you because you're going to get a, a more of an appreciation for what it's actually like to do that career. And you may save yourself a lot of heartache and money doing that ahead of time rather than going full into whatever degree you're looking for and you get three or three and a half years in and then you find out, holy shit, the system is fucked or holy shit, I don't like this line of work and you're you're backed up against the wall. Also, trade jobs are pretty good. I think a lot of people kind of, you know, poo-poo them away. I don't think they should. You make a lot of fucking money doing construction, uh, electrical work, plumbing, that kind of shit. I mean, you, you there's pretty good job security in that. There's a pretty good living in that. So don't think that you have to go to college or that it's a requirement. You can find a lot of fucking, you know, good jobs out there. Get in young, apprentice, work your way up, uh, and have a good, comfortable life. Uh, Leo the Bum Tickler, if I only tickled the Russian guy's bum, maybe then he would enjoy life again. Ooh. Hank Wimbledon, the cartwheel vid is what happened if DSP and heroed? Uh, yeah, the, the fucking cartwheel vid still sticks out in my memory because of how fucking ridiculous it was. Okay. Uh, Big Bet, have you played Zero Escape from the 3DS? If not, you should try it. I think that's actually up on Steam. I think I own that on Steam uh, because they put out a collection of a couple of those games. If I'm thinking of the right one, it might not be. Shark Week, why do you think that people think that you're some alt-right political powerhouse? All you do is troll? I stay away from politics mostly. I mean, I covered the election because it was entertaining, but that was mostly having people come on and talk about what politician they liked. I mean, I had Kyle come on and he was a Bernie bro. I had other people come on that were like supporting Ted Cruz or they were more interested in, uh, who's the other one? Uh, Rand Paul. Uh, you know, I was even going to have a Hillary supporter on, but it, it didn't really work out. Kind of the format and the timing just didn't work out. And then I covered election night. And I think I've done like one or two political videos uh, shitting on more local stuff that was kind of connected to a protest movement. But it, uh, really, my videos aren't putting out a lot of political shit. Um, I, I talk about furries and people fucking each other with toothbrushes. I don't know how you're getting hardcore politics from that. So I, I, to answer your question, I don't fucking know. Alec the Bunny, everyone, email Sargon of Akkad your recent bowel movement to represent him in court. I, I, don't, know if, <laughs> I don't know if that'll work, but it's a brilliant legal strategy Nick Bates would probably love. Extort1220, gas the furries. Jackson Rotting. Jim, you don't know it's common knowledge that pretty much all brown people smell like curry, B.O., and shit. It's not their way to practice good hygiene. Mark Young. Jim, the mattress shooting video is on, and he links to the uh, URL. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, he's talking about the guys fighting over the dumpster. That was, it was a mattress video. Was that what they were arguing over? I don't fucking know. It's a gunfight in an alleyway over trash. It's fucking ridiculous. Universal impurity. I think it's time for Sargon to say goodnight, Irene, to his place in pan-European politics. Tom, the pussycat Gundam enthusiast. What do you think of it? Okay, we're back to there. I think I've caught up now. Let me see here. Yeah, I went through and read a lot of the super chats from last time to try to get like a general idea of what the big questions people wanted answered were. Like, what were the main topics and they ended up either being covered later in the stream after the super chat went through or they've been followed up in this stream a lot of it was what do you think of Sargon uh, what do you think of uh, liberalists uh, just shit, general shit like that or people commenting on where they thought it was going to go uh, I, you know I want to try to keep the Sunday Funday streams fun um, and just laugh at dumb shit uh, you know I know we're focusing on this group at the moment well, you know, next weekend, like I said, we'll do we'll do Shit Rat and the others and have a nice laugh at their stupidity. We'll listen to Shit Rat, uh, have his mother tell him to clean up his pee-pee uh, while he hits on Lauren Southern. I'm not making that up, by the way. He's on a live stream with a chick he's trying to basically hit on. And in the background, your mother can hear, uh, you can hear his mother yelling about him taking a tinkle on the toilet. Uh, it's classic shit. So we'll laugh at that. And then, you know, from there on out, a little more skeptic stuff. But uh, there are other groups, so I, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting that content lined up. I'm getting that good shit going. Maybe I have to go get Scruff Steve Jobs to write me some better scripts. I don't know. We'll see how we play it out. 
maybe maybe I'll, I'll reach out and have him help me with this. Make it make it extra spectacular. But uh, okay, I so I think we're caught up. Uh, again, if I miss some, I'll try to catch them next time. I will. Yeah, I'm working on trying to get a thing where it will tick across on the screen. So if I somehow miss them, they're at least up there. Or like a little corner. I want them to be legible and clear. So I, I know there's a program I can either use in OBS or Streamlabs or something to make it come in, you know, nice and good. I'm not going to do any of the sound effects yet because I think that's personally annoying. But just to get it up there. Uh, so hopefully I have that working by next weekend or the weekend after. So next Sunday, fun day again, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. A lot of shit to do. It'll be a longer stream, probably about two hours, maybe two and a half hours. Uh, that's, you know, without Super Chats. With Super Chats, it'll be probably another hour after that. Uh, hope to see you there. I hope you have a good weekend. I hope you guys have a, a good weekend. Go out there, have a nice dinner. Have some, you know, spend some time with the family. Go out, see a movie, play some video games. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, thank you for coming out for Sunday Fun Day. Thank you for the people that stuck around. I will see you next weekend, hopefully. And uh, we'll, we, we'll, we will cut it here. We'll cut it here. I will see you next weekend.